Hey everybody, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats. Um, hopefully my microphone's working because somehow it was submerged in a little tiny, a few drops of water, so hopefully there's no weird static. And this is an, a strange shot of um, Henry, <coughs> excuse me, in front of the uh, paintings back there. Um, hopefully... I won't need to look desperately for a stand-in because I don't see a stand-in photo of a kitty nearby. So let's just jump in. We're on Deuteronomy chapter 23. <laughs> look, Henry's looking up to the heavens again. Okay, um... He kind of goes with that painting that my mother painted that by the way the brown one with the red oh no he's leaving I painted the other one with all the colors oh no he's gone Ugh, and he's meowing okay there's one down there there <clears throat> where'd you go okay there's he came close. <clears throat> Pardon me. I keep clearing my throat because I still have something. Appreciate your prayers. Okay, well, they're going to move around, I guess. Because somebody's restless. Please settle in, Henry. Are you going to settle in and listen to the Bible? Are you going to settle in? Are you, are you ready? Are you ready to hear Deuteronomy? Did you come close to hear that? Danny, you ready to listen? Wow, thanks for drawing closer to the Lord. Okay, we're going to read Deuteronomy 23. It's funny, he's just staring right at me. It's, I'm kind of at an angle, so it looks like he's staring. <clears throat> Not at me, but okay. Let's just read Deuteronomy chapter 23. Okay. No one uh, who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a for forbidden marriage nor any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the 10th generation. No Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the tenth generation. For they, they did not come to meet you with bread and water on your way when you came out of Egypt, and they hired Balaam, son of Beor, from Pithor and Aram Naharim to pronounce a curse on you. However, the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. But turn the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loves you. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them as long as you live. Do not despise an Edomite, for the Edomites are related to you. Do not despise an Egyptian, because you resided as foreigners in their country. The third generation of children born to them <clears throat> may enter <clears throat> excuse me may enter the assembly of the lord when you are encamped against your enemies keep away from everything impure if one of your men is unclean because of a nocturnal emission he is to go outside the camp and stay there but as evening approaches he is to wash himself and at sunset he may return to the camp designate a place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself as part of your equipment have something to dig with and when you relieve yourself dig a hole and cover up your excrement for the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you your camp must be holy so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you if a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand them over to their master. 
Let them live among you wherever they like and in whatever town they choose. Do not oppress them. No Israelite man or woman is to become a shrine prostitute. You must not bring the earnings of a female prostitute or of a male prostitute into the house of the Lord your God to pay any vow because the Lord your God detests them both. Do not charge a fellow Israelite interest, whether on money or food or anything else that may earn interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but not a fellow Israelite, so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put your hand to in the land you are entering to possess. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to pay it, for the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from making a vow, you will not be guilty. <clears throat> Whatever you, your lips utter, you must be sure to do, because you made your vow freely to the Lord your God with your own mouth. If you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat all the grapes you want, but do not put any in your basket. If you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not put a sickle to their standing grain. Okay, everyone. That's the end of Deuteronomy chapter 23. Um, I don't know. I was just reading that with some feeling for some reason. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. First thing, verse 3, no Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the 10th generation. The first thing that came to my mind is the book of the Bible in the Hebrew scriptures uh, entitled Ruth. She was a Moabite. And there's an entire book in the Hebrew scriptures devoted to her, Ruth and Naomi. Um, she was a Moabitess, and she was she was married to a, a Jewish man. And um, if you read that 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 book of the Bible, it's fascinating. But anyway, it's interesting this admonition against um, allowing Moabites into the assembly, and yet we also have an entire book of the Bible devo really devoted to her faith that this Moabite woman. Um, and then in the genealogy of Jesus, she's, you know, Jesus is descended from her and, and uh, Boaz. She married another um, Jewish man, a kinsman redeemer. And um, I don't know if that's interesting. The other thing is, do, verse 7, do not despise an Edomite, for Edomites are related to you. And I believe that Edomites, Edom is like, in Jordan and like um, you know I, I think of the area of Petra but I, I believe they're Jordanians today um, it was interesting too today is um, Sunday the um, oh I forget the date but anyway Israel last night was attacked by Ar Iran almost 300 drones and I think Jordan helped with intercepting some of those. So I thought, I thought that was interesting. And thankfully, Israel is fine. But I think a little Bedouin girl was hurt, which is really sad. I think she was the only one who was hurt. Um, sad. Okay, what else about this passage? Oh, I thought it was funny. Oh, Guster's coming over. <laughs> he wants a hug. Um, I thought it was funny when this passage talked about how to relieve yourself hygienically, you know, and that you need, you need, um, cause they're camping basically in the wilderness and, you know, it's like, you, oh, cause you're stepping on the microphone. Like you need a shovel, take your, take, um, equipment with you and dig a hole and then cover it up. And then, um. Yeah, as part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It's like a cat. That's what kitties do. They're hygienic. They're following the Lord's command to dig a hole in the sand and cover it up. It's very clean of you, Guster. 
Um, but what gets me is verse 14. Um, For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know why that cracks me up. It's like... The Lord doesn't want to step in it. Come on, people. That's why we have toilets today. No, but I, I mean, he did create everything. But I'm sure just because he created it doesn't mean he wants to step in it. You know, <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> Please take me with a grain of salt. This is not exegesis that we're doing here. Is just me talking off the top of my head. Okay, so what else about this passage? Um, yeah, if you make a vow, um, which I have done before, and I don't think I'll ever do it again. I think I've shared this when I was sick, like 24 years ago in the hospital. And between life and death daily, I vowed that if I lived, I would write a book about this, about everything. And it took me like two decades to write the book. And then when I wrote it, um, it was just like this heavy burden on me. And it was never ending and it never was complete. And I didn't know how to finish the book. And so there are like a thousand pages. <laughs> and um, and it was like an albatross around my neck. And then my brother was a writer and had an agent. And of course, the, her genre, of, the, the genre of this agent was um, uh, crime, crime fiction. And of course, this was a memoir, which wasn't at all. And it was spiritual. So anyway, he was like, um, yeah, I'll give it to my agent. He liked the book. And so I did, and she rejected it, and she said it was too much like a diary. And um, I was devastated, and then I was like, okay, that's it. I fulfilled my vow. And so I set it all aside. Anyway, it, it was hard to live with that vow of writing a book about something traumatic that you don't want, really want to relive. So I'm not going to make a vow again. All right, everybody. Here, listen to Guster purring. Good boy, Guster. Good boy. Um, he's just hugging me. Well, we can say a prayer while he's purring. Lord, I thank you for protecting Israel. We just pray. Lord, I do pray for Israel, for the peace of Israel, for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you that um, the U.S. helped to intercept and, you know, blessed Israel in that way. Thank you that the Edomites, the Jordanians helped as well to intercept. I do pray, Lord, um, for the people of Iran because I know there's a revival going on there. Like they, they really are turning to the God of Israel. So many Iranians are turning to the God of Israel and, and to the Messiah, Jesus. So I pray for those people, that you protect those people, should there be any um, retaliation. or, um, But I do pray that you dismantle that regime there that's evil. Um, and I pray for everybody who's listening or watching, that you would bless them in a special way today, Lord. And... If there's anything I said today about the scriptures, please forgive me. Um, but I just, I don't know. 
just some things are unusual that I, when I read them, but I thank you for your Holy Spirit, and <clears throat> please help me understand some of these things that I don't readily understand in your word. But we thank you for Jesus and for um, his righteousness that covers us, like like the the Passover blood of the lamb that that covers the doorposts and lentils of the house so that the angel of death passes over. This is the blood of Jesus that enables us to live and escape the angel of death. We thank you for that, Lord. Pray you bless everybody listening and watching in a special way, Lord. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And, um, yeah. And what was that ironic blessing? May the um oh goodness, I'm forgetting the ironic blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Okay, I think I paraphrased that. All right, everybody. Bye.